Okay, our, uh, our theme for our Vacation Bible School, and I know the VBS doesn't start until tonight, uh, but what we often do uh, when uh, Vacation Bible School comes is we often try to bring something into the Bible class hour uh, and even the sermon hour that will uh, coincide with, uh, with what's happening with our VBS. And so on the screen is the theme uh, for our Vacation Bible School that starts tonight. And uh, we do encourage all of you to plan to be here for that. There are classes uh, for everybody, uh, from the little ones all the way up to the, uh, the not-so-little ones. How do you say that? Um, from the youngest all the way up to the uh, not-so-youngest. You, you know what I'm getting at, right? There's, there's classes for everybody. Um, if, you are, uh, if you are alive, if you are breathing... If you still have blood running through you, you have a class here tonight. Uh, and so, uh, we, and Monday night and Tuesday night and Wednesday night. So we hope that you'll plan to be a part of that. And the theme for our VBS this year is Operation Creation. And uh, the, the, the bulk of the material is something that is uh, being produced by Apologetics Press uh, a few years ago. Uh, a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, uh, Apologetics Press hired a man by the name of Jeremy Pate uh, who, had been, uh, who had been a preacher, had been doing youth work, and uh, AP hired Jeremy Pate to come on and to, one of his primary responsibilities is writing their Vacation Bible School curriculum. Uh, and if you have had a chance to look at their curriculum, uh, you would understand that that is a full-time job. Uh, he has written this curriculum from the very youngest uh, of ages all the way up through the adult classes. And he's not just, he's not just compiled, and I'm not, when I say he's written it, uh, the stuff for the adult class, he's, he's compiled from Jeff Miller's uh, material and a lot of the others for the teenagers, he's compiled from uh, Eric Lyons and Kyle Butt's material, but he's compiled this material, he's brought it in, and then he has illustrated all of the illustrations uh, that you see that are a part of uh, the Vacation Bible School, a lot of them he did. Uh, he is a, not just a good writer and a good Bible student, but he's a tremendous artist. Uh, and so he, he wrote a lot of that. He put together all of their PowerPoints. And so all of the PowerPoints uh, that we're going to be using today and as part of the adult class are just straight from AP uh, because of, uh, they've done a great job of putting them together. So anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's our theme. That's our focus for, uh, uh, for the VBS. We're going to have four nights of VBS, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, their, their Vacation Bible School material comes with five lessons. So I grabbed their fifth lesson which we technically would not be getting to in our VBS, and I pulled that in uh, to be a part of our class this morning. And my guess is we're not even going to finish this lesson this morning because there's so much material in it. Um, but they don't, the, the classes, the uh, lessons don't have to particularly go in order. Uh, and so class this morning is on human evolution. Have you ever heard about that? You ever heard of the idea that humans have evolved? Uh, now, some of us maybe haven't evolved as much as some of the rest of us uh, have, but that's not the kind of evolution uh, that, uh, that is under discussion. When, when you talk about evolution, you need to see a difference between macro evolution and micro evolution. Is there a difference in that? Macro evolution is their idea that humans have evolved from that single cell amoeba over time and there have been macro major evolutions that have taken place. Micro evolution is just small changes that take place. Um, do, you, do you look like your parents? Do you have any similarities to your parents? Uh, but are you your parent? I know you might be... Um, what was that song? My grandpa, I might be my own grandpa. Whatever that song was, I can't even think of the words now. But you're not your parent. There's some slight differences. Um, and Dana, Dana Barnhouse used to sing it in our New Year's Eve thing. Uh, I'm my own grandpa, right? Is that the song? All right, you, now, now you all get that song in your head. If you don't know it, you can go and you can go look it up on YouTube today and your life will be complete. Uh, but um, so uh, you might have some similarities to your parents, but you're also going to have some slight differences too. Uh, and that, that's just because there is a micro change that takes place over time uh, from generation to generation, not because we're becoming something other than human, but because we are humans. Uh, but there are slight variations uh, that take place. But 
evolutionist, Dar specifically Darwinian evolutionists, want us to believe that we have evolved from a single cell organism all the way into this complex human being that we are today. If you don't hear anything else today, and I might say that more than once, but if you don't hear anything else today, the concept that man has evolved from a single cell organism into the complex human being that they are today, do you know how much evidence exists for that? If, if, if you could just like quantify and put into a number, here's how much evidence exists for that. Do you know how much evidence exists for that? None. Let that sink in for a minute. Now what's taught in school? Is this taught in school? Is, is, this, is this permeating throughout our society as the norm, as the expected thing, as just the understood uh, origin of mankind, and yet the evidence is not there. It does not exist. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. Uh, does the evidence that is out there support human evolution? Well, I guess I've already told you the answer, so maybe you're going to check out at this point, right? Because I've already told you that there is no evidence uh, to support it. Um, but um, what are some of the pieces of evidence that have been used over time to support this? Here's, here is the, uh, here's the fossil record, uh, at least a depiction of the fossil record. And the way this chart reads is from, you recognize that, right? That's uh, Flubber from uh, that Disney, no, that's that single cell organism that uh, supposedly evolved uh, into a fish, into reptiles, uh, evolved into a chimpanzee, evolved into uh, ape-like creatures, and eventually evolved into a man carrying a briefcase to work. So that is the theory, right? So does the fossil record that they have used, uh, at least they have tried to use over time, does the fossil record support this? Now, here's the deal. If, and, and this has got what? Well, five, ten, so this has only got 20. So this only, no, not oh, 19, because there's only four on that line. So this has 19 various defined stages of this particular evolution that's taken place. Now, if this has really happened, if we have really evolved in this manner, how many transitory creatures are there between, does this look like an iguana to you? Uh, some kind of uh, reptile creature. How many transitory fossils have there been found, for example, between this reptile looking creature and this chimpanzee looking creature? If, if this evolved into this, wouldn't you expect in, in fossils, you know what fossils are, right? When, you get, when they're finding fossils, would, would you expect to find a fossil of a creature that would fit right in between there to say, hey, looky here, here's a creature in his fossil that's part reptile and part chim chimpanzee. Would, wouldn't you expect there to be a, f I mean, if, if this has been happening, by the way, this is, according to them, this has been happening for millions of years, millions. Okay, so if there's millions of years of this evolution of all of these creatures, wouldn't you expect, okay, there's got to be a fossil that, that would represent somewhere in these transit, in, uh, fossil in between these stages, say, okay, that fossil proves, helps us to prove that these stages, that these transitions from one type to another actually occurred. That's what you would expect, right? And that's what evolution would predict you have to have those transitory fossils except what's the problem well there isn't any evidence <laughs> not a single piece of evidence to show that any of those transitions as they want them to be actually took place and so you see what we're going to do is we're going to kind of step through the fact that the evidence that they have uh, is actually inadequate on one hand, is erroneous on another hand, and then you get into some other pieces that they've tried to use, and you say, wait a minute, what does that have to do with the subject at hand? It's completely irrelevant to what we're trying to talk about. So, first of all, when you talk about uh, this idea of, of human evolution and these fossil records, the evidence is inadequate. What does inadequate mean? What is, define that term for me. 
Not enough? Is that what you said, Sat? Isli, what did you say? Doesn't meet the requirements. Isli, say it again. Not enough. enough. What did you say, science teacher? Insufficient. Insufficient. All right. So, okay, so they say here's the evidence. It's not enough. It's not, it's not, it is not sufficient to meet the needs of what they're trying to say. So, I'm going to give you some quotes, and all of these are from AP, okay? All of these are from Apologetics Press. These are materials uh, that they have been, put to, been able to put together. But I want, I'm, I'm going to share some quotes with you from evolutionists, okay? People who believe in, have taught, and continue to uh, espouse this theory of evolution. According to them, the fossil evidence for human evolution is actually meager at best. Here's what Kate Wong. Kate Wong is an evolutionist uh, and a, a senior science writer for a, a publication called Scientific American. Here's what she said. The origin of our genus Homo is one of the biggest mysteries facing scholars of human evolution. Based on the meager evidence available, scientists have surmised that Homo arose in East Africa. Look at the terms that they have in bold here. She says, the origin of humanity is one of the biggest mysteries facing human evolution. Wait, why is it a big mystery? I mean, if if evolution is real, (laughs) why would it be a mystery? And, And why is it that they're saying there is, an evolutionist is saying, oh, there's just meager evidence. What does the word meager mean? (laughs) Not very much, which is actually an exaggeration. The word meager is actually an exaggeration, because remember how much evidence I said that there is? Zero. So what does the word meager mean? They actually say that there is some, but they're saying, oh, but the evidence we have is meager. It's not very much. It's not very good. So... Paleontologists often rely, and as you study through their evidence for these transitory creatures, their evidence often relies on just a few isolated fossil bones, or sometimes just bone fragments. And so supposedly from these isolated bones or bone fragments, they have created, let me back up to this, just from, I'm going to, where is it? Just from a few isolated bones or bone fragments, they have created this. And they say, this is, this is real. And I'm going to show you some, some of the evidence that they, have, that they have pulled together. So, this, uh, this Kate Wong, she went on to say, For decades, paleoanthropologists have combed remote corners of Africa, because they think that's where humanity arose, on hand and knee. They've combed it on hand and knee for fossils of Homo's earliest representatives. Their efforts have brought only modest gains. What have they found? A jawbone here, a handful of teeth there. Most of the recovered fossils instead belong to either ancestral osteopithecines or later members of Homo, creatures that are too advanced to to, uh, eliminate the order in which our distinctive traits arose. With so little to go on, the origin of our genus has remained as mysterious as ever. How much do they have to go on? (laughs) Wait a minute, I thought, I mean, what are they taught in school today? We've evolved. I mean, it's it's not even, you know, know, is it a theory? It's called the theory of evolution, but this is just, if 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 you have a brain in your head, you understand that evolution is how we got here. How much do they have to go on? Meager evidence, so little to go on, and so, wow, it's kind of mysterious, where we can't, why does it have to be mysterious? If, if we're so certain that this is where we came from, why does it have to be mysterious? Mariette, uh, I don't know how to say the last name, so I'll just say it in David English. Uh, D. Christina is the editor of Scientific American. She also admitted that pieces of our ancient forebears generally are hard to come by. Scientists working to interpret our evolution often have had to make do with studying a fossil toe bone or a jaw there. A jaw bone here or a jaw jaw there. Boy, that's great, right? So you've you've come up with your your whole theory based upon a toe bone. That sounds like really sufficient evidence. What are we talking about? Inadequate evidence. 
So in New Scientist magazine, New Scientist describes the available fossil evidence for humans, and here's what they've said. The available evidence is you got part of a face here or a jawbone fragment there. Supposed human evolution fossils generally amount to just a few fragments rather than complete skeletons. This is, this is a, a publication that is put out by people that believe in evolution. But what are they saying? Oh, we only have a, we only have a, a few fragments. And I'm going to show you what some of those fragments are and let you even see uh, how, how those can be understood. Another scientist by the name of Lyle Watson um, indicated that even after over a century of searching for homo fossils, here's what Lyle's, Lyle Watson said, the fossils that decorate our family tree, think about this, our family tree. Do you have a family tree? You have fam anybody got a family tree at home? You got a family, sometimes you got family trees like in the cover of your Bible. You ever bought a Bible that's got fi like a family tree and you can, you can say, okay, here's, where my here's my mama, here's my grandparents, here's my great grandparents. Here's what they've done. They've created a family tree. Well, guess what's on the very base of their family tree for us? That single celled organism. Isn't that a nice family tree? You're up here in the leaves and where'd you come from? Oh, that little single cell. Or, so that's their, when they say family tree, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about this, this progression from that single cell organism all the way up to humans. The fossils that decorate our family tree are so scarce that there are still more scientists than specimens. The remarkable fact is that all the physical, how much of the physical evidence? All of the physical evidence we have for human evolution can still be placed with room to spare. So... If you gather all of the supposed evidence, okay, all of the supposed evidence they have for human evolution, they're saying it could be gathered all together and placed in one place and there'd still be room to spare, just place it inside a single coffin. That's, that's their terminology, not mine. They are admitting that their supposed evidence for human evolution, huh, yeah, we don't have much. Is, would you say that that could be described as inadequate evidence for something that every, everybody who's got a brain in their head knows that we've evolved? Creation? Come on. There's, here's what they'll say. There's no evidence for creation. Hmm. Do you have any evidence for creation? You have a universe full of evidence for creation. They don't even have a coffin full of evidence for evolution. Hmm. I wonder which one of these I ought to put my faith in, that I ought to put my trust in. Where the, where's the evidence? So there was, there's an evolutionary paleoanthropologist. Paleo, can you spell that? Paleoanthropologist, who is a paleontologist who studies ancient human fossils. Apparently that's what a paleoanthropologist is. Anyway, his name is Lee Berger. He's uh, from a university in South Africa, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of the university in South Africa, um, but he has become famous over the, uh, the past decade for some notable fossil discoveries, but he even admitted that there's a lack of human evolutionary evidence in the fossil record, so here's, here's what he said. Now think about this. If you put your faith in something where there's no evidence, what kind of faith is that? You put your faith in something where there's no evidence. That's a blind faith. What do they say about creationists? Oh, that's a blind... F no, 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 no. I've got a universe full of evidence. They don't have any evidence, so wh where, where's their faith? Well, they've got, they've got a blind faith, but huh, their blind faith is not shaken by their lack of evidence. Think about that. They've got blind faith, but it's not shaken by their lack of evidence. And so Lee Berger said, we really need a better record, and it's out there. He's an evolutionist. He believes in Darwinian evolution. He believes that we were not created, but that we have evolved from a single cell organism. And so he says, we just need a better record. Hang on a second. How long have they been searching for this? Remember what the one quote said? They have been scouring on hands and knees in East Africa trying to find evidence. Well, what's he saying? What? It's out there. It's somewhere. We'll, we'll find it. We'll find it one day. So, Evidence for human evolution. First category, it's inadequate. And even the evolutionists 
admit. Think about that. Even the evolutionists admit, yeah, the evidence we have, it really isn't adequate. So let me ask you a question. Should you believe in evolution? Should, should you believe that we've evolved from some single cell organism all the way up to this complex human being? How much of the evidence is not adequate, and even those who want you to believe it, admit it. Category number two, erroneous evidence. What does erroneous mean? It, it, it doesn't mean it stinks. Well, maybe it does. Uh, it, it, that, that, that's another onious. What does erroneous mean? It's wrong. So here's evidences that they have put forth that are wrong. And so this same man, uh, this same uh, paleoanthropologist, Lee Berger, um, he kind of got on to uh, some other scientists because basically what they do, um, well, let, let, me, let me just put his quote up here. He explained that the fossil his, his fossil discoveries show that one can no longer assign isolated bones to a genus. He said that you can't take a mandible, a lower jaw, or a maxilla, an upper jaw, or a collection of teeth and try to predict what the rest of the body looks like. Well, shouldn't that be common sense? Think about it. Remember, this is the guy that says, we need a better record and it's got to be out there somewhere. But on, uh, on his discoveries of, of, these, of these fossils, of these bones, he has kind of chided these other scientists who have taken some teeth and have developed a whole creature from some teeth. And this evolutionist this, this is saying, wait a minute, how can we do that? How, how can we be, he didn't use the word honest and he didn't say it this way, but how can we truly be honest and say, this is where we came from? And so some of you have seen some of these pictures that I'm going to put on the screen before. And you've seen them before. Some of you have seen these names before. Uh, if you're in, uh, uh, some of you are, have, have been in public school, maybe, uh, maybe not recently, but in years past, where you had a science textbook that would have had some of these things that we're going to put on the screen. Some of these things were in those textbooks, and some of them still are in the textbooks as, here's the evidence. You, sh you just can't answer this kind of evidence for evolution. Okay, so remember, here's Lee, here's Lee Berger saying, what has been happening over time? Oh, they've taken a jawbone or they've taken some teeth and they have formulated a whole creature off of those. Does that make sense? I mean, is that, that makes sense that you could do that, that uh, you could just take a small piece of, of tooth and say, oh, here's, here's what this creature looked like. Um, you know, have, you ever, have you ever watched, um, I know you have, you ever watched CSI, you ever watched NCIS, you watch these, these cop shows, They're some of your favorite shows, right? Where, where they find a piece of evidence. And of course, it's, it's television, right? So everything you see on television is right. And it's accurate and it's true, right? So it's on television. So they, they're, they're, they go to this, maybe they, they go to this junkyard because it's been broken into and they're searching this junkyard and they look at the fence where, where, where you enter into the junkyard and the, and the thief was not very smart because he caught, he caught his garment, he caught his clothes on, on the fence and what happened? Well, it, it tore a little piece of his garment because they found it, right? I mean, it's the middle of the night, but they found this little piece of, of, uh, of, of garment, this little piece of cloth. They found it hanging on the fence there in the middle of the night. Well, what if they were able to take that little piece of, of cloth, just that little thread that they found? Maybe it's just a little thread that they found. Oh, look at this little red thread. and Oh, this is going to be our biggest break in the case because we found this little red thread. What if they were able to take that little red thread and tell you what garment it came from, what size garment, small, medium, large, extra large, you know, where it was sold, who was wearing it. What if they could tell you all that information from that little thread? Well, if it's on TV, you know it's true. If you saw it on TV, you know, hey, these CSI people are really smart. You think you could, you think you could take that little thread and, and figure out everything about the garment that it came from? The, the, you know, I know you can find out some things, but you're going to tell me what size that garment was and who was wearing it and what time it fell off. And we, we believe in some of that because we've seen it on TV. But I want you to look at some of this. Java Man. Doesn't that sound like a cool name? Java Man. You want to see some of their blunders and hoaxes and evolution? 
Java man is a supposed human ancestor that was later found out to be erroneously based on the skull cap of an ape and fossilized teeth and a thigh bone of a human. So in science textbooks, Java man used to be there. And Java man was evidence for evolution. But then they, then they started to research Java man and found out, oh, wait, no. We're actually just dealing with, with part of the skull of an ape and some teeth from a human. This really isn't evidence. And, and they've come back and they have redacted that and said, no, that's really not evolution. What about Piltdown Man? You've probably seen him. An alleged human evolutionary ancestor later found, he used to be a part of that proof, that evidence, but later found to be a forgery using a modified orangutan jawbone and a, por and a portion of a human skull. Okay, so this used to be proved, oh wait, this, but think about this. Look at this. That looks complete, right? It looks intact. It looks like a complete skull, right? What is it made up of? A modified, a what? A modified orangutan jawbone. So does that mean they had the complete jawbone? Oh, no, they, they, they had to manufacture a little bit. And a portion of a modern human, but what do you see? You've got a, you've got a complete structure right there. What'd they do? Oh, they just filled in the gaps. Is that, is that, is that okay? We, we've got some pieces of some things. We're just going to fill in the, gla fill in the gaps. Th this, this next one might be, I don't know, I'm looking at the list here. This next one might be my favorite. You ever heard of Nebraska man? You've heard of Florida man, right? I mean, uh, Florida man's all over the news, right? Florida man this and Florida man that. Uh, you ever heard of Nebraska man? Here's Nebraska man. Nebraska man is an alleged human ancestor. Do you see his picture? He looks real, right? Look at his picture. Don't look at the, don't look at the words. Look at his picture. Have you ever seen that picture before? You ever seen that picture before? You've probably seen it somewhere. Textbook, museum. Here's Nebraska man. We know what he looked like. Do you know what that picture is based upon? Based upon a single tooth that was later found to actually be from a wild pig. But that's their proof. That's what they have convinced children. Evolution is true. Look at this picture of Nebraska man. Where did he come from? Oh, we found a tooth. We found a tooth, and so we, we created a whole creature out of a tooth. What if, some, what if somebody found one of your teeth? That'd be scary, wouldn't it? What if somebody found one of your Do you think they could tell what you looked like based upon your tooth? Think they could tell? You think they could tell if you had facial hair based upon your tooth? You think they could tell whether you had hair or not? based upon your tooth? They took a tooth and they said, oh no, this is from an upright uh, creature walking on two feet. No, it was actually from a creature that walked on four feet. Should we believe everything that we're told? Should we believe every picture that we see? Allison? Is that camels? Uh, that, yes, that would be camels. Don't, don't, don't. Don't get the idea that, uh, that Nebraska is just limited in geography, but yes, those, those would appear, I, Allison, I actually don't know, okay? Those would, appear, those would appear to be camels, but this also appears to be Nebraska man. So I don't know uh, if I can speak with authority about what those actually are. Um, but think about the evidence. We're supposed to believe that from a tooth that was actually from a pig. What about Flipper Man? You ever heard of Flipper Man? Another alleged human evolution ancestor that was based on what, well, later it was acknowledged that it was based on a rib from a dolphin. Um, not really what they were looking for, and so they had to admit, no, this is from a dolphin. What about Orsi Man? An alleged ancestor based on a skull cap, later to be found, actually, well, no, this is from a donkey. Um, not, not what we were thinking it was going to be. Here's one of my favorite. Java Man 2. I don't, I don't know if this is like a sequel. Uh, you know, like Iron Man and Iron Man 2. So, but anyway, there's Java Man 2. So, after Java Man, remember Java Man? After Java Man was discovered, right? Here's, here's Java Man. You see him, right? So, here's Java Man. After Java Man was discovered, disco we found Java Man. This is proof of evolution. But before... 
before they realized, oh, no, 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 wait a minute, we're just talking about pieces of evidence that don't fit together. So they found Java Man 2. They discovered Java Man Dose. And Java Man 2, a few years after Java Man find, but before the mistake was actually discovered, there was a professor, a Hebrew Lion of the Dutch Medical Service, that found what appeared to be a complete Java Man cranium in the same area that Java Man had been discovered. But again, the fossil was hailed as more evidence of this transitional creature. We've proven evolution. Uh, but in the retraction, the Smithsonian Institute said that the cranium was actually the kneecap of an elephant. Close. It's close. It was almost proof. But think about this. What appeared to be, a, do you see this with me? Appeared to be a complete cranium. Was it a cranium? Was it like part of a brain structure, head structure? No, it was just a kneecap of an elephant. Not proof of evolution. Southwestern Colorado man, same area, where, uh, or in the same Java Man 2 retraction, uh, the Smithsonian noted that the southwestern Colorado man, lately deduced from a set of Eocene teeth, again, how did they create this creature? Just from some teeth. The teeth were proved to be from an antique horse. Calaveras man, July 1866, Josiah Whitney, head of California's Geographical Survey, unveiled his discovery of a skull that had been found in Calaveras County. And he presented, it, he presented a paper on it. It was discovered in a mine shaft beneath volcanic deposits believed to be a million years old. Wow, this proves evolution. It, at the time, it made it, this is the oldest known human ancestor on the continent. Wow, we have found it. Eventually, once again, it was determined to be a hoax. Planted by local miners, carbon dating reveals it's approximately 1,000 years old. Close. Million years old, 1,000 years old. But, but in the same, it's got ones and zeros, so it's in the same neighborhood, right? And this was human, no, it's not human evolution. It's not evidence of any stretch. What's the point here? Point here is that throughout history, in some of our textbooks, when you go to school, you're supposed to believe what's in the textbooks, right? Right? I mean, you, you pick up a textbook and, and that you, ha you have one textbook that, that shows you that, uh, that two plus two is four, and interestingly, not just two plus two is four, but two times two is four. And so you have a textbook that teaches you how you figure out that two plus two and two times two are the, the same exact thing. And so you trust that textbook. You have a textbook that teaches you that, uh, you know, that, that July 4th of 1776 was a monumental day in the history of this country. And you read about that day and you believe what that textbook says. But then you go to another class and you have a textbook that says, here's where you came from, little boy, little girl. You came from Nebraska, man. And here's a picture of your ancestor. Here's a picture of your family tree, not with your moms and dads and your cute grandparents, but here's a picture of your family tree. And at the bottom of the base of your family tree, yep, there is that uh, single cell organism. That's little boy, little girl, that's where you came from. And it's in a textbook. I'm supposed to believe two plus two is four. I'm supposed to believe July 4, 1776. All right. Then I'll believe I came from Nebraska man too. Because those little children will believe what they're taught in school and what they read in those textbooks. Yes, ma'am. Um, Allison's question is, are there, are children in other nations also being taught this? Um, it is, uh, and I, I don't know a, an exact answer to that. Some of you may know uh, more than I, where's, where's, uh, okay, in the Philippines, uh, there we, there, there we have personal evidence that says, yes, Douglas? Sure, so a lot of those discoveries are around the world, you know, I haven't looked into the textbooks of other schools, but here we've got, we've got personal evidence to say, yeah, it's, it's there, um, you know, we, sometimes we think America's on the leading edge, right? Uh, that, that America's the, the one out in front, and sometimes we are. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, America has been criticized for being held back in scientific discoveries because of the limitations of many 
Say that again. We have been criticized as a country for being held back in our scientific discoveries because of time. Okay. So uh, um, Nicole says America has been criticized through the years uh, that we have been held back in our scientific understandings because at one time we believed in creation. You know, how, uh, uh, how infantile can you be to believe in something like that? And yet, here's the evidence. Yes, ma'am. Uh, some of them, some of them do. It, it, it's going to vary. Uh, you know, the, the various the various religions of the world, um, you know, are going to vary on what they teach about about our origin. Um, and uh, uh, you know, and here, here's here's the thing. And we're, what, what does Romans one and verse twenty say? And we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about this a little bit more at the beginning of the sermon today. But what does what Romans one and verse twenty teach us? That when we look at the things that have been made, what do we understand by the things that have been made? We can see God by looking at the things that... Well, somebody says, I can't see God. Okay. By, we can know, we can understand the invisible God based upon those things that are visible to the point that we are without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament was those what? Shows his handiwork. Well, you, you can't believe in God. You, you can't see God. The evidence is there. Now, what's, what's the point of that? And why do I bring that up? Um, people, who are, people who allow their God-given brains to look at evidence and evaluate evidence without being manipulated to believe something, what do they come away with? You know, what are, the, what are the stories that we have heard for years? Um, is that, you know, when, in, in remote parts of the earth, when, when explorers came into remote parts of the earth and found individuals who had no concept of the Bible, didn't have the Bible, hadn't been taught about the Bible, what did they find in these, uh, in these communities, in these groups of people that were in remote places that had never heard about God? They believed and understood that they had evolved from a single cell organism and that they had these charts all over their walls that they had, that they had drawn into stone to say, look, we know this is where we came from. That's, that's what they found in these, in these remote parts of the earth, right? <laughs> no. What had these people done? They had evaluated the evidence that was in front of them. They said, look, here's a tree. Look, here's stars in the sky. Look, here's the sun. Look, here's... here's Here's all of these, uh, these uh, spring, summer, and fall, winter, these seasons that we have. Look, here's all of this. Wait a minute, how did all of this come about? And they never believed that it came about by accident. Why is that? Well, because they're not educated, right? They're not educated. They're, they're, they're primitive people. And the primitive people did not understand, really, that they had evolved. Wait a minute. Why do I have to be educated to know where I came from? Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 says, I can know the eternal power of God and His Godhead, His sovereignty. How? By reading the Bible? Well, sure. But that's not what Romans 1 and verse 20 says. It says, by looking at what's been created, I can know that. Gary? Gary? True, and, and, that's, that, and that, that is the problem, that, that, when, that when man turned from God uh, at the beginning, now we are seeing that ripple effect, that domino effect, that man has gotten further and fur further and further and further away from God. Um, I, don't know that, uh, I don't know that Bill Hatcher was the one who uh, 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 came up with this concept, but uh, Bill Hatcher is the one I remember illustrating this. Uh, how many of you all remember the name of Bill Hatcher? All right, like 10 of us, good. All right, so um, Bill Hatcher uh, preached here back in the, uh, in the 70s. And uh, how many of you all remember 36th Street? How many of you all remember the lowering pulpit down into the floor? That was like the coolest thing. On all right, so on 36th Street, we had a stage much like this, and we had a monster-sized pulpit. I mean, that thing was huge, all right? Uh, and I'm not kidding. Um, that thing was 
That thing was this wide and that deep, all right? That, that, I mean, the thing was huge. Um, it, it, was, it was every prayer leader's dream. He could get up there and his knees be knocking, and you couldn't see his knee. You couldn't see anything back. All right, so anyway, way off topic, right? So, but that pulpit was built in such a way that you, you went over and you flipped a lever, and that whole pulpit went all the way down into the ground. Uh, it's pretty cool. Worked really good for weddings, right? So, you know, you lower it all the way down to the ground, put that little uh, cover over, and it, it's, it's down in the floor. Why am I? T- oh, I forgot why I was talking about the pulpit. But anyway, you could flip the switch, that pulpit would go down. It was, it, it was every kid's. When, when that happened on Sundays, kids paid attention. All right? It was cool, uh, partly because you could hear the motor running. But when, he, when, when Bill would lower that, pul- he'd only put it about halfway down. Then he'd go back, and there was a, there was a chalkboard that was hidden. Uh, and, and he would pull that chalkboard out. And I might talk about this at homecoming, because one of my vivid memories of growing up, you know how they say that smell, that smell is a great, um, me- great has, has, is good for memory? That, you know, when you smell certain things, like it brings back memories. And visually, you see things that brings back memories. Sounds are also that way. And I can still hear in my mind, and you all are going to hear this probably again on Homecoming if I remember to say it, I can still hear in my ears, in my mind, the, the I would say tapping, the tapping of the chalk on the chalkboard, but it, it wasn't tapping. Because Bill Hatcher attacked. The, Vince, am I right? Bill Hatcher attacked. I mean, it wasn't just, oh, da, da, we're going to... I mean, it, it, I, again, little, little kid remember, memory, okay? May, maybe it wasn't, but... Uh, boy, this is, this is TMI. But I also, because my grandparents were the custodians of the building, um, we were also there to clean up the giblets of chalk that were all over the floor after he had attacked and I'm not picking I'm just saying it wasn't it wasn't just tapping it was, anyway why are we talk, why why are we talking about all of that um, so anyway when you think about what has transpired over time uh, and why did I even get talking about that what were we talking about what oh yeah Bill Hatcher's illustration all right so whoo what do we got? I've got, I've got, oh, it's 9.45. Oh, well, time, t- class is over. Um, all right, no. All right, finish with this. All right, so here's what he illustrated on that chalkboard when he's attacking it, okay? He drew a straight line across that, that chalkboard, as straight as he could make it. He drew a straight line, parallel, horizontal line, okay, across that chalkboard. And then he came over here on this side of the chalkboard, and he drew another line that was coming off of that straight line, but it was only slightly off. I mean, it was just, I mean, you got this, you got this horizontal line. He came over here and drew another line. It's just slight. I mean, if you're looking at that line over on this side of the board, you couldn't tell that it wasn't completely parallel and horizontal like the other one. You couldn't tell it because it was just so, just barely off. But what happened as he went across the board? Those lines across the board got... Fr- but over here, it, over here, you couldn't tell. Over here, it was so close, you couldn't tell the difference. But the further and further away you got from that point of deviation, the further and further away those lines got from each other. What's the point? The point is, when man sinned in Genesis chapter 3, oh, come on, it's just eating a piece of fruit you're not supposed to eat. A little bit of deviation... And you take that over time and what has happened to mankind. Further and further and further away from God to the point that somebody would, they would rather believe they found a little tooth and they would rather believe in Nebraska man that we have evolved rather than believing the plain evidence that's there. How did we get there? Because man turned away from God. Thank you all very much. We, I, we might finish this tonight because I didn't even get time to finish this today. We'll have our worship here in just a few minutes.